Good morning. Today I'm going to be doing a Q&A session. Let me just get ready real quick. Can't forget the sunscreen. I'm almost running out. Let's hope there's enough for today. I've officially ran out of foundation. This has never happened. First time. This is the Georgia Armani foundation and it's so good. So, so what's you guys' definition of early? Because I think I woke up pretty early today. I woke up at 9.15, but I know for some people that's super late. So let me know if you guys are a morning person or not. This is one of my favorite stuffs. The brows look way more natural and gives it some dimension, especially for people like me with no brows. Recently, my eyelids have been acting up. I think it's the weather change. It's causing this part to really dry out and almost every morning I wake up, my eyelids are like messed up. Like I'd have a triple eyelid. The doctor asked me if I have eczema. I don't have eczema, so I don't know why. And he's just prescribed me some cream. It's gotten better, but it hasn't gone away fully. So yeah, it's really annoying because nobody likes to wake up with swollen eyes. This has been so clutch. Its original use is to help people get like double eyelids. So you know how there's like the tape, but this is just like the glue version. So it doesn't leave marks. I never use this for that purpose. I use it when my eyes are fucked or like super swollen. I just like mark it back to where it's meant to be. So actually I used it on this earlier because this was messed up. Like it was literally triple eyelids, super swollen. Drew a line here, which is where my usual line is and made it come back. Before that, there was an eyelid here. So it was literally like, everyone have this in your makeup bag, especially after a night out, if you had really late ramen, or if you cried the night before. With my lashes, but as you can see, I have nothing. So I got this from Japan. It's like an eyelash curler. Honestly, doubted that this would work, but actually works. So if you have lashes like me, non-existent, pointing downwards, try using this. How I use it is I literally just like hold it still against my curled lashes. Can you tell? It's come up a little bit. Okay, I will say today is not the best eyelash day for me. My lashes look tragic, so I'm actually going to put on some individual lashes to each of my eyes. It's too hard to film this and show you guys because I can barely do this properly. I will show you when I'm done. I'm back. I didn't do it that well, but I put about five or six. So this is the look with uh, five or six lash extensions on each side with mascara on and I'm fully aware that most people look like this just with mascara on but sad okay moving on from this tragic conversation I put some glitter I don't know what I'm doing so yeah final step can't forget the lip gloss Okay, this is my makeup look for today and see you guys on the couch. Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing a Q&A today and I've compiled a list of questions I got from Instagram, YouTube, so I'll be answering it here. What is your MBTI? So I'm an ESFP. I'm, I'm definitely an extrovert. I get energy out of like spending time with my friends. I would say a little bit less extrovert if it's with strangers, like people I haven't met, just because I find that the older I get, the less inclined I am to like meet new people. But definitely if I see someone interesting that I want to get to know, I would go hit them up. I would say that I am a very spontaneous and adventurous person. I'm like a huge adrenaline junkie, so I would go on like every ride and I'm like such an experienced person, but I'm also a really active person. I actually prefer doing activities over getting brunch with my friends. 
just because I feel like doing titties is a bit more dynamic. Like, you can always play a sport and then get a meal after, right? And I feel like it feels more satisfying that way. So I like to play sports with my friends, whether it's like like badminton, volleyball, os tag, like anything. Like I'd be willing to try it out. Where are you from? I am Taiwanese Australian, so I have dual citizenship. Are you American? No, I'm not American and I get this question a lot. I went to an international school in Asia, but it's an American system. So that's why I have this accent. Believe it or not, I actually used to have a very, very thick Chinese accent when I spoke English because I didn't learn English until I was about like six years old. I went to a Singapore international school as well, so I had a Singaporean accent and now I'm stuck with this. When it's someone that like I know I'll never meet again, like an Uber driver or something, they ask me like, oh, are you American? I just tell them like, yeah, I'm American. They're like, where are you from? And I'm like, yeah, I'm from Orange County, you know, just visiting Sydney. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like if I say I'm Australian, I just end up having to spill my entire life story, but like, it's not that relevant in some context. So I just kind of, let it go over. So, what language do you speak? So I can speak Chinese fluently. Chinese 所以我跟家人讲中文的时候我会试着不要掺英文因为我讲中文的时候会有的时候就忘词忘词的时候就会讲英文但是我觉得那样子很很逊 like, My friends are mostly Taiwanese or Chinese And we're just so used to speaking Qing English to each other like, like one sentence will be English and then 下一个我们就讲中文 因为真的是还蛮natural的对我们来讲 How did you end up in Sydney? So as I mentioned, since I'm Australian, it kind of just made sense to come to Sydney because American unis are really expensive. I had family here at the time. Both my sisters were in Sydney and they freaking abandoned me the year I moved here. So both of them lived here. I came in 2017. They left like literally that same year to move to London and Shanghai. So I was all alone. What's your plan with YouTube? So, <laughs> that's a loaded question. YouTube's something that I really enjoy doing. It's very, very time consuming, so it would be really hard to keep up a very regular cadence on top of a full-time job. So if I could, making YouTube my full-time would be amazing. My plan for my YouTube channel is to have basically different kinds of videos. So I'm interested in fashion, lifestyle, and travel vlogs, sometimes challenges, and I like exercising, so maybe anything exercise related. What did you do for work before? How do you feel about leaving? Ooh. So my first job out of uni, I was a tech risk and cyber consultant. I did that for almost two years. The team was really big and I made a lot of friends and I actually still play Oztag with those people right now. I transferred into a different team. It's the digital strategy and UX team. That was super fun. I did more design and research and more strategy based stuff. But at that point, I had realized that I wanted to be a product manager, so I pivoted to product. That was not an easy journey, it was very difficult. So my last job was a product manager. I really enjoyed my role as a product manager. It was highly rewarding. It was so nice getting to collaborate and lead different teams and kind of like see this product come to fruition. I love it. So if I go back to corporate, that will be the role that I'm looking for. It's just really hard because product management is not an easy career to get into. I had only just broken into that career and then, you know, stuff happened. Um, in terms of how I feel, I feel great. Like, I'm so lucky that Ben owns a cafe because I can just come chill here. It would suck if all my friends had a job and I was just staying at home doing nothing but I literally just come chill at the cafe, hang out with Ben, hang out with Daniel or Tina and 
Also, I realized that a lot of people are actually unemployed right now, whether it's because they just realized they don't want to do the job that they were doing anymore or they got laid off. So I think that's very comforting for me to know. Of course, every now and then I'm like, oh God, like, I don't want to go back to corporate. Like, can I even find a job? What am I, what am I gonna do with my life? Like, sometimes I have those moments too. But I think it's a pretty common experience for people in their mid and late 20s. So if you feel that way right now, I think just know that you're not the only one. I feel that way, a lot of people feel that way. It's actually pretty normal to like branch out or take a break. Actually, my sister Julie, she took a break as well around the time she was 26, 27, and then she got her dream job after that. I don't know, maybe I'm just saying this to make myself feel better, but either way, yeah, we'll figure it out. Are you working part-time at home for Sonnery? <laughs> nope, I am not. I am just here to hang out and help out if Ben or Danny needs me. So mostly I help out with Ben back of house just because I don't want to be in everyone's way in the front. And that's mostly after the shop closes. If I happen to be here during service and I see that they're being overwhelmed, then I might help them clean some tables or take orders. And a lot of people have been asking me this. How did you get the cafe job at home for Sonnery? Well, I don't work here, <laughs> but the short answer is the owner is my boyfriend, so. Sorry, I can't give you guys advice for how to get a cafe job since your girl doesn't have any experience, but should we go ask Daniel? Let's see what Daniel looks for in a boy. Daniel, how can we get a cafe job at Home Croissantery or any cafe? Okay, I can't say about any cafe, but for <laughs> our cafe, Experience is nice, but it's not critical. I think the main thing is just that you kind of pass the vibe check that you, that you, you know, you're comfortable being yourself, you're open, you're welcoming, you make sure people have a good time. That's really the main thing. Everything else, it can be learned, but I think that part is, to me, what is most important about working in hospitality. I love you guys, and congrats on 10K!